Uh, well, I will. I took the liberty to take this question a little bit further because now I would like to find polynomial not of the cubic degree, which fills in the gaps, but polynomial of the fourth degree, which fills in the same gaps. So rather than looking for the polynomial P of this type, I will look at the, into the polynomial Q of X, which is now by one degree higher, this polynomial. Again, it will be, there will be unknown coefficients like this. B0, x4, b1, x3, b2, x2, b3, x, and b4. You see, now we're looking at the polynomial of degree 4. And I need to find the, uh, again, I will ask the same question, how to find the all. Let find, let's find the coefficients, b0, b1, b2, b3, b4, which will make this condition satisfied. One of the solutions to this will, be, will obviously be this coefficients we, we have found already. But there will be more solutions. Look at this. Again, I will, I will follow the same, the same footsteps. I will use these conditions to come up with the equations on my known coefficients. Here's my equations. Again, my alteration of signs for negative 1. B0 take B1 plus B2 take B3 plus B4 equal 1. Point x equal 0 gives me simply B4 equal 1. Point x equal 1 gives me B0 plus B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4 equal 3. And final equation with some coefficients, 16, it's a 2 to the power 4. B0 plus A B1, uh, 8 B1, sorry, 4 B2, double B3 plus B4 equal 1. Again, I didn't bother much finding some ad hoc approach. I just fed the coefficients into the computer algebra system, and I come up with a solution. And I promise that will be the last time I'm going to open a large matrix today. Two large matrices, in fact. So here's my augmented matrix. That's the matrix which will have extra, if you don't want to copy the whole matrix, the only difference to my to this matrix will be I will just put an extra first column with the coefficients 1, 0, 1, and 16. The rest of the matrix will be identical to this matrix. So here it is. You see, it's the same matrix with the extra column in the first place. Unfortunately, it doesn't help you to find the row echelon form in a speedy way, because by adding an extra column at, uh, in front of a matrix, it doesn't suggest how the row echelon form will, will alter. So we need to feed the whole matrix into the MATLAB. But if you already had the open session when you verified this, feeding a new matrix to this open session with the MATLAB or Maple wouldn't be that hard. Just You will add just one extra column to your MATLAB. In fact, if you know MATLAB well enough, I think there's even special command which feeds in extra column into the matrix. But it's, it's for you to find that command. Anyway, I fed this matrix, and again, I went to reduce row echelon form because I didn't bother with the back substitution. Here's a reduced row echelon form. which the MATLAB gave back to me. Oh, Maple gave back to me. <coughs> Easy reduced row echelon form. This time you can observe that we have a non-leading column. We have a non-leading column, which I will need to parameterize. I will use the name, the parameter name T for this non-leading column. If I use this T parameter, the rest of the unknowns can be solved in terms of this T parameter. A, for instance, B4, it's simply 1. B, uh, it's 0, 1. B2 will be 2 take T. Or in fact, you know what? Because we have 1 half here, because we have 1 half here, I suggest we name the parameter not T, but double T. That will make the writings a bit shorter, because then these two will cancel 1 half here and 1 half here. So my parameter will be double T rather than T, which doesn't change much in terms of the principles. But in terms of the writings, it will make it a bit nicer. So here we go. Here's my Q polynomial. And because you see, for different T, for different T, I will have different solutions here. Different polynomial interpolating my values. Different polynomial which fills the gaps. I, want, I, I would like to reflect this dependence on the parameter T in my notation. So my Q will be like Q sub T. You see? Because for different T's, it's a different polynomial, different answer. And some of the polynomial itself is this. Mm. 
Here we go. Right from the matrix, the last coefficient, B4, is 1. Here it is. The uh, B3 is simply parametrized by double T. B2, from this line, you solve for it. It's 2. Take 1 half of double T. That's why that's the B2. B1, you solve it from this line. And that's the 1. Take double T. And B, B0... It's a, it's a solution from the first line. In the reduced original form, it's a very easy solution. It's, again, negative 1 plus 1 half of double T. So here it is. And that's a complete solution to the polynomial interpolation question, the same polynomial interpolation question with the, within the scope of polynomials degree 4. As I said earlier, if you take T equal 1 here, T equal 1 here, the cubic degree will, uh, sorry, the fourth degree will disappear, and the remaining polynomial will be my original, my first solution, p, right? Right? If t is one, this is zero. This one is negative one, as in here. This one is one. This one is two. This one is one. So what I'm saying actually that my p polynomial we found earlier is simply the q1 polynomial we just found here in this family of q sub t polynomials. Q1 is my p original p. That's one observation which I'd like to make. The second observation I'd like to make, which connects this with the, actually with the vector spaces subject we've been discussing for like the last three weeks, is this one. My QT polynomial, I can do it like this. If I take this expression, and I'll ask you to do it in your heads, I'm not going to put this in writing, in detailed writing. If I take this expression, if I split the terms with T and with no T, what will happen? That's what will happen. The terms with no T, it will be exactly the polynomial Q0 where t is 0 here. That's that, that will be the terms which appear if you just take on, I mean, terms with no t. And the terms with t, it will be some other polynomial, which I denote q tilde, and that's the polynomial. Here it is. Here's a polynomial q tilde. Here's a polynomial q... Let me just lift it up a little bit. Here's my polynomial q tilde. T4 from uh, x4 from here, negative 2x cubed from here, negative x squared from here, double x from here, and nothing from here. So my polynomial splits my, my solution, my general solution to the interpolation problem splits into the into this representation. Or if I use my vector language term, uh, vector language, vector space language, I'm sorry, I can say that the family of these solutions. Q sub t, where t runs across integers, across real numbers, for every real t, there will be a solution. It's simply my Q naught polynomial plus the span of Q tilde polynomial. This sort of, well, this one we call the vector subspaces, this sort of constructions. Later on, you will learn that when you take a vector subspace and you shift it by one fixed vector, this sort of constructions are called affine spaces. And that's a very little development of the vector spaces you now, I hope by now you more or less know well. So the solution to this interpolation problem is this affine space, is a fine space like this. And that finishes my slide here. Any questions? No? That's what people call polynomial interpolation. In simple language, it's filled in the gaps. Uh, I have a little graph of what happened here, uh, down here. If you finish copying, I will bring the slide a little bit up. So here's my graph. Here's my graph. Here's the points, negative 1, 1, and 3. Here's the value 1. Here's the value 3. I need to skew my graph a little bit, abuse the scale, the, the, yes, the scaling, because otherwise it doesn't fit on the screen. So my one, my vertical one, not exactly the horizontal one, but I, I, I hope you can live with this. So my original polynomial, here it is. That's the polynomial P of X. We found this polynomial P of X. We found first. I, and I also have the graph of this affine space of solutions. I cannot give you the complete affine space graph. It's impossible, but I can give you some snapshot of it. Here's the polynomial Q sub T. And where t parameter, I change this t parameter between 0.9 to 1.1 with the stepping, with the stepping to two one hundredths. 
So it's a five polynomials all together. One, two, three, four, four. Sorry, ten polynomials all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And the red one, red one, that's exactly the polynomial for t equal one. It's a p polynomial. And that's what we call polynomial interpolation. Any questions?